Numbers chapter 11 And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So the name of that place was called Taberah, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat! We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its appearance like that of bdellium. The people went about and gathered it, and ground it in hand mills, or beat it in mortars, and boiled it in pots, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. When the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell with it. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give them birth, that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom, as a nurse carries a nursing child, to the land that you swore to give their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they weep before me and say, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once, if I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, and let them take their stand there with you, and I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you, and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, so that you may not bear it yourself alone. Tell the people, Consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow, when you will eat meat. The Lord heard you when you wailed. If only we had meat to eat, we were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat, and you will eat it. You will not eat it for just one day, or two days, or five, ten, or twenty days, but for a whole month, until it comes out of your nostrils and you loathe it, because you have rejected the Lord who is among you, and you have wailed before him, saying, Why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, Here I am among six hundred thousand men on foot, and you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month? Would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them? The Lord answered Moses, Is the Lord's arm too short? Now you will see whether or not what I say will come true for you. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together seventy of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him, and he took some of the power of the Spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders on him, and the Spirit rested on them. They prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men, whose names were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my lord, 
stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Now a wind went out from the Lord, and drove quail in from the sea. It scattered them up to two cubits deep all around the camp, as far as a day's walk in any direction. All that day and night, and all the next day, the people went out and gathered quail. No one gathered less than ten homers. Then they spread them out all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, and before it could be consumed, the anger of the Lord burned against the people, and he struck them with a severe plague. Therefore, the place was named Kibroth Hatava, because there they buried the people who had craved other food. From Kibroth Hatava, the people traveled to Hazaroth and stayed there. Chapter 12 Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had married a Cushite woman. And they said, Is it a fact that the Lord has spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us as well? And the Lord heard this. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any person who was on the face of the earth. And the Lord suddenly said to Moses and to Aaron and Miriam, You three go out to the tent of meeting. So the three of them went out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent. And he called Aaron and Miriam. When they had both come forward, he said, now hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision. I will speak with him in a dream. It is not this way for my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my household. With him I speak mouth to mouth, that is, openly, and not using mysterious language. And he beholds the form of the Lord. So why were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? And the anger of the Lord burned against them, and he departed. But when the cloud had withdrawn from above the tent, behold, Miriam was leprous, as white as snow. As Aaron turned toward Miriam, behold, she was leprous. Then Aaron said to Moses, O oh, my Lord, I beg you, do not hold us responsible for this sin by which we have turned out to be foolish, and by which we have sinned. Oh, do not let her be like a dead person, whose flesh is half eaten away when he comes out of his mother's womb. So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, God, heal her, please. But the Lord said to Moses, If her father had only spit in her face, would she not be put to shame for seven days? Have her shut outside the camp for seven days, and afterward she may be received again. So Miriam was shut outside the camp for seven days, and the people did not move on until Miriam was received again. Afterward, however, the people moved on from Hazaroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. Chapter 13 then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send out men for yourself to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am going to give the sons of Israel. You shall send a man from each of their family's tribes, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran at the command of the Lord, all of them men who were heads of the sons of Israel. These then were their names. From the tribe of Reuben, Shamua, the son of Zakur. From the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Hori. From the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. From the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph. From the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun. From the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu. From the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. From the tribe of Joseph, from the tribe of Manasseh, 
Gadi, the son of Susi, from the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gamali, from the tribe of Asher, Sethor, the son of Michael, from the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Vafsi, and from the tribe of Gad, Geuel, the son of Maki. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. But Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. When Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, he said to them, Go up there into the Negev, then go up into the hill country. See what the land is like, and whether the people who live in it are strong or weak, whether they are few or many. And how is the land in which they live? Is it good or bad? And how are the cities in which they live? Are the people in open camps or in fortifications? And how is the land? Is it productive or unproductive? Are there trees in it or not? And show yourselves courageous and get some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob at Labo Hamath. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob at Labo Hamath. When they had gone up into the Negev, they came to Hebron, where Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, were. Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Eshkol, and from there they cut off a branch with a single cluster of grapes, and they carried it on a pole between two men, with some of the pomegranates and the figs. That place was called the valley of Eshkol, because of the cluster which the sons of Israel cut from the tree. When they returned from spying out the land at the end of the forty days, they went on and came to Moses and Aaron, and to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. And they brought back word to them, and to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. So they reported to him and said, We came into the land where you sent us, and it certainly does flow with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And indeed, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Amalek is living in the land of the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites are living in the hill country. And the Canaanites are living by the sea and by the side of the Jordan. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who would explore the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers, and that's what they thought too.